Hey everyone, it's Matthew here from Midland Pictures. Today we're gonna go back and do a Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial and take a look at how I prep and log interview footage for editing. All right, so just to give you a little bit of context, Midland Pictures, my company, is the motion picture storytelling studio. We produce a lot of documentary films for brands and businesses. Most of those films are in a short format, but on occasion we have uh, edited something that's a little bit longer, 20, 30, up to an hour, hour plus feature length. So I spend a lot of time editing this content. I've been using Final Cut for close to 10 years now, ever since it came out day one, and interview footage is a big part of the videos that we produce. Whenever you have interview footage, there's a lot of conversation that needs to be logged and prepped in order to edit it as efficiently as possible. So I really like to take my time using some of the amazing tools in Final Cut Pro 10 before I actually start editing to get all of the interviews that we filmed properly prepped and logged. When I say prep, I typically mean setting up multi-cam, selecting the audio tracks that we wanna be able to use during the edit. When I talk about logging the footage, what I mean is using Final Cut's event browser in list mode to actually notate what everything is, what question was asked and what the person's response was, whether it's with a direct transcript, a loose transcript as we listen to the interviews, or just a few keywords that let us know what the person said. These steps are crucial for any editor to be able to edit as efficiently as possible. For me personally, I really like to get into the creative flow when I'm editing my interviews and my documentary films. And if I'm in that creative flow, the last thing I wanna do is get popped out because I'm looking at interview footage that doesn't have a lot of good log information. It doesn't have a lot of good summaries or notes. I don't know what the question is. I don't know what part of my outline for the piece that this question or answer corresponds to. And if I'm doing a lot of that work where I'm really trying to wrap my head around what I'm looking at when I'm looking at the event browser, it's pulling me out of my creative flow. And I'm not sort of channeling those artistic instincts and impulses to really make a quality cinematic film. So if you're someone that gets your footage, especially interviews, and you just immediately start putting stuff on a timeline and start your edit, I would highly encourage you to watch this video thoroughly so that you can learn how to better prep your footage and maybe even use this if you have the luxury of having an assistant editor to help coach them up on how to prep the footage that you, the editor, are going to be using in your edit and how they can make sure that everything is prepped and logged in a way that you stay in the creative flow. Now I'm going to emphasize the logging part in this video. The prep work, like I said, selecting audio angles, creating multi-cam, syncing using time code or the waveform in Final Cut. I'm gonna assume that a lot of you know how to do that stuff, especially with interview type footage. So I'm gonna start with most of that prep work already done and dive right into how I use the tools in Final Cut to log all of my interviews. So we're looking at Final Cut in its default mode. We've got the event browser over here, we've got the preview window over here, and the timeline down here. I don't like to use the default mode to do all of my assistant editing, so I've created a custom workspace that allows me to have a layout that better suits when I'm logging all of the footage. So we just go up to window here and then go to workspaces, and then I'm gonna do assistant editing YouTube. Uh, that's because I'm using a single screen for YouTube. When I'm editing, I usually have Final Cut in two monitors with a third monitor on my right for my outline, for a Safari window, anything else that I need so I can do my productivity stuff. So you can see here that we have all of our interview footage. We've got three takes uh, from our A cam, which is a C300 Mark II, and then we have some takes here from our B cam, which is a Canon EOS R paired with the Atomos Ninja 5. We shot all of this in 4K, 10-bit DCI, and then we have some audio over here from our sound recordist who was mixing a lav mic and a boom mic into one file. So you can see over here that I have a smart collection for all of the footage that's interviews that has to do with our subject here. And this happens to be Steve Baldwin. He's the owner of Baldwin Toys in Omaha, Nebraska. We just produced a short documentary for the Omaha Summer Arts Festival virtual event. You can check it out on the YouTube channel. It's all up there and ready to go. You can also go to our website, midlandpictures.com, and watch it there as well. So then I also have a smart collection for the multi-cam clip that I created using all of the angles and the audio. If I need to just 
double check just the EOS R footage or the C300 footage, I like to have a smart collection for those as well. But let's go ahead and dive into the multicam because this is what I'm going to be using in order to log the footage. So right now we're in film strip mode in the event browser. And if you're not terribly familiar with it, you've got some controls here to let you kind of fill the screen and look at all of these sort of uh, frames of your clips. So you can get a, a quick look at a glance of all the footage that you have to deal with. I'm gonna actually switch this over to list mode because I need all of this real estate to be able to log all of the footage. Now there's a couple of different ways that people go about logging their footage. One way of doing it is by using favoriting. Another way is by using markers. And the third way is by using keywording. Like I said, I use a combination of all three with markers being the thing I use the least. Keywording being something I use somewhat frequently, especially if the content is much longer in format. And then favoriting is my go-to method for logging footage. So we've got the interview clip here and there's all this stuff at the beginning. If there's any black frames, I like to actually find those black frames and, and, and delete those in essence so that I don't have to worry about looking at them. So I'm just gonna use my key controls here, J, K, and L to back up a little bit. You can see we've got Slade in and over here we've got some black frames. So let's go ahead and find when image comes back up and isolate that. And then I'm just gonna hit an out point there and then hit the delete key and that's gonna mark that as a rejected area. So then if I go up here and choose hide rejected, it'll leave that part off. But I'm gonna go down here to the end first and cut off the black frames that might be down here at the end. So let's back up a little bit, mark our in, and then we'll hit the delete key. And then if we go over here and hit hide rejected, now we're not looking at any of those black frames anymore. We're just looking at the portion of the clip that has actual image. Now, even though this has all the slate and all that stuff in there, I like to keep that from being rejected because on a documentary style video, you never know. Sometimes you use the slate as kind of a way to do some cool B-roll. It's getting a little overused, so I don't really do that anymore. But a lot of times in this sort of moment after you slate where your subject is kind of sitting there, every once in a while there's an interesting moment or a look or a smile or something that's usable in the, in the edit itself. So I like to keep all that in. The first thing that I do is I go and try to find the first interview question. So let's say that I'm looking at the waveform here and that first interview question happens here. I'm gonna go ahead and mark an in. And then let's say he finishes up his answer over here. The way that I'm doing this with you is a little different than how I would be doing this if I was actually sitting here without you guys hanging out with me. What I would be doing is I would be listening to myself. I did the interview. I'd be listening to myself, ask the question, and then waiting for Steve to give his answer. When I get the question and I hear it over my studio monitors, I'm gonna go ahead and log what that question was and then listen to the answer. So right now we have the whole section from when I ask the question to when he's finished answering the question, and I'm gonna mark that as a favorite. You see this little carrot pop up, and if we pop down, we now have this favorited clip. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to type in the question that I ask, and usually what I do at the beginning of interviews is I do what's called some pancakes. I do some really easy questions. What's your name? You know, uh, where are you from? How long have you been working here? You know, things like that, that the person can answer very simply and help try to bring some of the nerves down. So I have a document here that has some of the pancakes that I asked. And this document is essentially the outline that I created when I was putting all my interview questions together for this piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that this favorite, rename it to what the first question was, which is name and what you do. And you just type that in and now your favorited clip has this for its name. Now in the notes field, I'm going to type in what he says. Now, because this is a simple question, name and what you do, um, you know, you can put in Steve Baldwin and maybe separate with a comma and, you know, a toy maker at Baldwin Toys. Again, normally I'd be listening to what he says and I'd be trying to type up more, more verbatim or in note form what he's actually saying. And this is where being a good typist can really help you. If you're an editor who's not really good at typing and has to look at the keys or kind of finger pecks, this is gonna be a little bit more difficult for you to be able to do. But luckily, 
modern technology 2020, we have transcription software that can actually transcribe these interviews. Now, I don't do the transcription stuff because I both conduct the interview and I'm gonna log it. And again, I can type so fast and I just need a sort of overview of what the answer is that going through the transcript process is a little bit cumbersome. Most of my clients don't need to see a, a transcript. I always include that option if they want one so they can review it and maybe make selects of what they liked that the person said. But for the most part, I have not relied on transcripts at all. So again, if you're not a good typist, think about using Simon Says, which has a built-in app extension for Final Cut to transcribe interview audio. If you are a good typist and don't have to look at the keys, then I recommend going about it the way that I am. So we have our first favorited. Now I'm gonna to go to the next question, which let's say I just ask here, I'm gonna mark an in, and then let's say we wrap up that question right here. And then I'm going to favorite it again. And then let's say that this is, oh, how long have you owned and operated Baldwin Toys? How long owned uh, Baldwin Toys? And then we'll give his answer, which was 26 years. And you can see, with again, with these pancakes, that these notes that I'm typing in are relatively not you know, they're not that much. There's not a lot of information there. Something else that you can do because we have sections here marked off is you can find where you can notate the section. So maybe you want to say something like this to let us know that until we get to another set of questions, like right here, that we're in the pancake section of our outline. And maybe with this one, we go to our first question and we're going to say toys. Why toys? And as we listen to his interview, maybe he's saying, well, I like toys because they are something that every child connects with and loves play with. And he goes on and on and maybe has more things that he says and I just listening and typing everything that he says. See what I mean when I say that this can be a very time consuming and cumbersome process and it's never a bad thing to have an assistant editor? Well, I really like to get the details of what the person says because when I'm editing and get to a point where I really need to find something specific that this interview subject said, I like as many notations in the logging of the footage as possible so I can really zero in on a clip that's gonna work for what I need for that moment in the edit. This is also especially helpful if you did not conduct the interview or if you weren't at the shoot. Having someone or you yourself going through all the footage and listening to every word and logging it, that's a great way to absorb all of the information from the edit and kind of hold it in your mind and then be able to refer to this again as you're editing to get very specific information. Transcripts again are great. I prefer this way uh, just because I can type so fast, but the bottom line is logging the footage and getting a, a lot of text that, that, that shows what the person was saying is hugely helpful in the editing process. So you get the idea, you're gonna go through and you know mark all these in and outs as you listen and create all these favorited clips. And the end result is gonna be something like this, and I'm gonna pull up what I actually had in my edit for this project. And we've got Steve here, uh, we've got his multi-cam, and then if I carry it down, you're going to see all of the logging that I did for this interview. You can see all of the clips that are favorited here in uh, green at the top. You can see where I you know, you know, used in and out points even within that favorited clip to put stuff in a timeline. And you've got all of these different questions laid out so that I can use my outline as I'm editing to put this all together very quickly and really very quickly get an idea of what's essential for the story, what might be something that would be good but maybe something on the chopping block for being cut, and then something that just ultimately didn't really fit what we needed in, for the story that we're telling or the time limit that we have. But again, you can see here that these notes are extensive and you can stretch this out and see how far they go. And I will sit here and, and look at these as I'm editing and read what he's saying based on what these questions are so that I can figure out 
what it is exactly that I need for any moment in the edit. Now I had mentioned keywording and on this, this project I had not done any keywording, but when you're working on a really big documentary type edit, keywording is an additional tool that you can use to highlight moments that might pertain to a good line for the trailer, excellent sound bites for transitions between sections or, or chapters or acts in your film. And you can mark in and out and use the keyword editor to say, you know, trailer sound bite. And then you have that marked in blue. I like to put all my keyword collections in a folder for keywords. Uh, so that I can kind of simplify my view by closing them and opening them. But if I go back to multi and let's say, you know, this is a really good transition statement for act two, I can say transition act two and have that marked there. And let's say there's a couple other things that he says that are good, that are good for transitions into, into act two. I can mark all those keywords, and then when I need to do that part of the edit, I have all of those clips here in this keyword collection. Maybe there's something visually in this that is appropriate for a keyword, like right here, he's working with this um, utility truck. I want to uh, keyword that utility truck. Maybe there's something in the longer version of this that I'm going to need that section of him where he's demonstrating this. I'm going to use it for B-roll while he's talking off camera about something else. There's so many possibilities that you have with this keywording that you can really do some powerful things, especially for documentary editors, and keep your footage organized, logged, so that when you're in the flow editing the documentary and you remember, oh yeah, I keyworded a bunch of stuff that would be good for transitions into act two, you can immediately go to that keyword collection and start looking at the footage to plug into your edit. Now the third thing that I mentioned was markers, and I really like markers for a few things. I like to put markers on stuff if I know that there's maybe a rough spot in the audio that's gonna need cleanup. So let's say audio cleanup, and then I'm gonna do another marker. Call this audio cleanup two. No, oh, I said 23. Let's go ahead and fix that. Another thing is maybe there's a part that you favorited, and within that shot, there is something that you are going to do for a visual effect or something that, that you want to remember to tell the colorist. Um, VFX, you know, VFX uh, spot removal, uh, maybe over here, and then we'll change that maybe to uh, to a to do marker so it's a different color, and then we'll put one down here where we need to have VFX do something uh, with one of the trucks, like they're going to cut it out of the shot and do something with it. I don't know, VFX truck cut out. And we'll switch this to red for VFX. What's cool is if you switch to the project, and I'm gonna go ahead and open the project, and then you go back to your multi can. All these markers are here, right? If you take your clip and put it down in the timeline, you're gonna see that all your markers go with it. And the beauty of that is that your markers, they call them tags, are all searchable in the timeline index. So if you go to tags, you can see a list of all the things that you put on the timeline for, for you to remember, whether it was audio cleanup or something for visual effects. You can search those, you can do audio, and then you can navigate right to that spot in the edit to address that audio issue. Maybe you need to take a mouth sound out and it takes a plug-in or a little extra piece of software or whatever to do it. So these are some really powerful ways that you can log your footage as you're going through it. Something else you can do in Final Cut with all these favorite clips, if you don't want to look at your entire interview clip, you can start breaking them all down into specific favorites. So if you select them all and then hit the right arrow key, it'll open all those up and now you have each one as its own clip. Of course, my air conditioning turned on, so that's gonna be a little bit of an extra of a sound nuisance here, but whatever, we're just gonna roll with it because it's hot out, uh, 86 degrees right now, and we need to keep the house cool and my equipment cool. So my apologies for that. So where using this view is really powerful 
is being able to search all of your favorite clips. So let's say that you want to search your favorite clips for when he's talking about a train. Because you've logged all of this footage, all of the all of the text that's logged in the notes and in the questions is searchable. So you can just type in train and all the clips where the, either the question or the answer has the word train in it will show up in the results. This is really powerful. One thing that's a little bit annoying here is that when you go back from your search results back to all the clips, you have to select them all again and open the carrot. It doesn't preserve how you had everything open. I wish there was a way to kind of lock that into being that way. Apple, if you're listening, if we could maybe make that a possible feature, it'd really help us documentary editors who love to log our footage out quite a bit. But again, you can see like maybe there's a few clips where he talks about the price of things. So I'm gonna type in the dollar sign and I get all of these favorite clips that have a dollar sign in them. I mean, look at this. If I go to favorites, select all, carry it over, there's a moment where he talks about a Corvette and I wanna find that moment. Boom, done. There's a point in this where he talks about the Omaha Civic Center. And instead of me like scrolling through and trying to find that one clip, I'm just gonna type in Civic Center and here it is. Here's the clip that he talked about the Civic Center, right here. You don't even have to listen to it. You can immediately have it selected, hit your E key, and drop it down at the end of the timeline so you can start working with it, or insert it into the, the edit point where your playhead is. Just imagine, with an outline of your entire project, and then all of your footage logged, think of how quickly you can go through all of this footage and start putting clips onto a timeline to start roughing in the shape of the video. The other reason that this is an incredibly powerful tool is because if you're working with someone on this project, a producer, a director, a studio, all of the above, when you have all of your footage logged like this and someone asks you, hey, do you remember when he talked about the Corvette? You can go, yeah, let me just pull that up and you can quickly search it, and you've got your two clips right here where he talks about his Corvette. If you're working ENG, if you're a journalist with an editor and you're turning around content for your local news station or national news station, and you need to get this stuff done in sometimes less than a day, as long as you've taken the time to log or keyword or notate your footage with all the key things that the person you interviewed said, when you're working with your producer, your news anchor, your reporter, you can search for these clips incredibly quickly. This is really incredible being able to have this ability to log your footage, to essentially have a searchable database for everything that you created for your video. You create so much information that's searchable and you do all of that very hard heavy lifting up front, combining these powerful tools with the timeline index and the magnetic timeline there is no better NLE out there for documentary editing. Take a look at how I log my footage and really think about using favoriting, keywords, and markers to do all of that heavy prep work ahead of time and then dive into your edit, stay in the creative flow, and get your projects done so much faster. So I think that's gonna do it for today's video. If you wanna support the channel, the best thing that you can do is to like this video. We'd love it, of course, if you subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to hit us up down in the comments below. I have a few other Final Cut tutorials, so I really encourage you to take a look at the channel and check out some of the other tutorials that I have. I'll also link to the short documentary we're looking at here that I directed and edited so you can take a closer look at the end product. Thanks again everyone for watching. Until the next video, I will see you soon.